माई सेल्फ यम गुनाकर असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर ऑफ जुआलजी गवर्नमेंट डिग्री कॉलेज सिद्धिपेट तेलंगाना स्टेट टुडे आवर टॉपिक इज टेम्पोरल फोसे इन रेप्टाइल्स एंड देर एवोल्यूशनरी सिग्निफिकेंस बिफोर गोइंग इन टू द टॉपिक लेट अस हैव ए लुक ऑन ऑरिजिन एंड एवोल्यूशन ऑफ रेप्टाइल्स एवोल्यूशन ऑफ रेप्टाइल्स इज ऑफ स्पेशल इंपॉर्टेंस बिकॉज दे हैव डेवलप्ड द फर्स्ट लैंड एग्स एंड फाइनली मेड द वर्टिब्रेड्स इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ वाटर where they originated the reptiles represent the first class of vertebrates fully adapted for life in dry places on land actually they have no special diagnostic characteristics of their own that immediately separate them from other class of uh, other classes of vertebrates the characters of reptiles are in fact a combination of characters that are found in fish and amphibians on one hand and in birds and mammals on the other the class name refers to the mode of locomotion in latin to reptile or reptum is to creep or to crawl and the study of reptiles is called herpetology in greek herpeton means reptiles the reptiles had their origin and evolution from the amphibian stock from aquatic or amphibious habitats these animals ventured on to land for this adventure a number of modifications in their structure and habit had to be affected the reptiles originated from the labyrinthodont stegocephalian amphibians sometime before the permian period the early reptiles often called the stem reptiles were the cotylosauria or cotylosaurs the best example of cotylosauria was seymouria these first are stem reptiles spent most of their time in water but came out to lay eggs on land like that of the modern turtles the eggs developed a protective capsule containing enough nourishment these eggs became cladoic that is they have covered with a leathery skin for shell or shell which was pliable that means can be is a flexible but it it cannot break easily the embryo itself developed a bladder like covering from its uh, extra embryonic uh, area and this bladder like covering is called amnion which is filled with the amniotic fluid the fluid protects the floating embryo from shocks and from drying up similarly chorion and two other fetal membranes develop in embryo they are the yolk sac and allantois the yolk sac is for nourishment of the embryo from the yolk, from the yolk and the allantois helps in respiration and excretion and you can see the amniotic cladoic egg cladoic i already explained is developed a membrane which is a pliable but cannot be easily broken broken so here it is uh, amnion allantois chorion and yolk sac these and the membrane which protects the egg completely on land due to this origin from the amphibious mode of life the reptiles had to develop some mechanisms to escape from the evaporation of water on land and drying up this was achieved by the development of uh, certain things or certain mechanisms outside and inside the body some of them are the epidermal scales the pentadactyl limbs formation of distinct neck to facilitate turning of the head to see greater vista on land cause the formation of distinct neck and the articulation of the skull with the atlas vertebra by a single occipital condyle that is monocondylic skull the development of lungs for pulmonary respiration the terrestrial reptiles had to depend entirely on oxygen on the air outside so the development of lungs to breathe air started then this pulmonary respiration is has to, had to be correlated with the circulatory system which needs modifications pulmonary circulation and division of the ventricle into two though imperfectly were the adaptive features then the brain also showed enlargement or enlarged cerebral hemispheres and a well defined pineal body and the internal fertilization also developed 
the first reptiles that is stem reptiles or cotylosaurs gave rise to the other forms of reptiles in course of evolution they dominated the world during mesozoic period produced the huge dinosaurs then cotylosaurs which are called stem reptiles they evolved into five major groups of reptiles five major groups of reptiles they are ichthyosaurs plesiosaurs turtles pelicosaurs and diapsids the ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs were large marine forms they flourished for some time but then lost ground and became extinct turtles have persisted to the present day with little advancement now these are the stem reptiles with amniotic egg they gave rise to different forms the ichthyosaurs Uh, along with the plesiosaurs were large marine forms they flourished for some time and became extinct these are the plesiosaurs they became extinct and they had parapsid skull and as well as uriapsid skull so these two skull types were not uh, possessed by the living reptiles now next the pelicosaurs have evolved which gave rise to therapsida and these therapsids uh, ultimately they gave rise to present day mammals the diapsids have branched into two directions one branch gave rise to the lepidosaurs and the other branch lep archosaurs lepidosaurs included spinodon and modern lizards and snakes the other branch produced that is archosaurs produced a great great group of reptiles sometimes they called the ruling reptiles they later gave rise to the crocodiles pterosaurs and these dinosaurs also from archosaurs and birds ultimately developed from these archosaurs along different lines of evolution dinosaurs and pterosaurs finally they became extinct then let us look at the types of skulls reptilian skull is well ossified and has a number of membrane bones there is a single occipital condyle condyle that's why it is monocondylic skull an important feature of the reptilian skull is the formation of vacuities or fossae which are called temporal fossae reptiles were classified based on this temporal fossae into five subclasses these five subclasses were subclass anapsida uriapsida parapsida synapsida and diapsida the anapsid skull it was possessed by all the primitive reptiles it occurred in the earliest or stem reptiles order that is cotylosauria including saemuria it is still found in certain living reptiles called kilonia and skull in kilonia is further characterized characterized by immobile quadrate short bony secondary palate complete absence of teeth and horny sheaths over the jaws forming a beak and if we see the anapsid skull it has no temporal fossa so this is the anapsid skull which are possessed by the stem reptiles just now i told you cotylosauria including stem saemuria and here there is no tem temporal fossa but orbit is present and there is a supra orbital post orbital then parietal squamosal and uh, ventrally there is a jugal and quadrato jugal bones are present so anapsid skull was possessed by the stem reptiles as well as the present day kilonia then coming to the next skull that is uriapsid this uriapsid is also not present in present day reptiles but it was present in extinct reptiles the skull with a single dorso lateral temporal opening on either side single temporal fossa which was bounded below by post orbital and the squamosal next skull is the parapsid skull this parapsid was also possessed by extinct reptiles it is not present in present day reptiles it has a single temporal fossa on either side like the synapsid skull but fossa here is far higher so that post orbital and squamosal bones meet below it and the parietal bone borders it dorsally this is the yellow colored one parietal bone that is border dorsally and as i said no living reptile possesses this arrangement it was found in some extinct reptiles of the orders protosauria plesiosauria and ichthyosauria next one is synapsid skull 
Synapsoid skull has a single temporal fossa on each side. The fossa was at, at first small, low and bounded above by the post orbital and squamosal bones and below by the jugal and squamosal bones. So this is the jugal and this is the squamosal, this is the post orbital. In the extinct mammal like reptiles that is therapsids, the temporal fossa became progressively wider and higher so that the parietal bone formed its dorsal boundary. Finally the post orbital became incomplete leading to the typical mammalian condition that is temporal fossa and orbit combined with each other in mammals that can be seen in synapsid skull. Now lastly diapsid skull. The diapsid skull has some speciality because as the name suggests there are two temporal fossa and these two temporal fossa are present one above the other. The upper temporal fossa is called supratemporal temporal fossa and the lower one infratemporal fossa which are divided by post or a bar of post orbital and the squamosals which are shown here the green and blue colors respectively. The supratemporal fossa is bordered dorsally by the parietal bone and post frontal bones to some extent and ventrally by the post orbital and squamosal bones just now I said. The infratemporal fossa is bounded above by squamosal and post orbital and post orbital. This is the infratemporal fossa and below by the jugal and quadratojugal. This is the jugal and this is the quadratojugal bones. This diapsid skull was found in the extinct reptiles called dinosaurs and it still persists in the orders rhynchocephalia and crocodilia. Lizards and snakes have somewhat modified diapsid skull. Lizards have lost the quadratojugal bone making the inf infratemporal fossa open in the, on the lower side. With the result the two temporal fossae and the orbit are combined and open ventrally. The modification in lizards and snakes has made the quadrate free to have a movable articulation with the otic capsule allowing greater freedom of movement of jaws. Birds also have a modified diapsid skull. They have lost the post orbital bone resulting in a combination of both the temporal fossae with the orbit. Now you can see here the, how the anapsid skull which is possessed by the cortilosaurs or stem reptiles it was given rise to various types of skulls as the reptiles are modified to other forms so this is a anapsid with no temporal fossa and this is possessed by the present day turtles tortoises also that is chelonia order and it gave rise to different forms as I said. It gave rise to the parapsid on one side, synapsid on the other side and the diapsid also. Then further each one of them has some modifications so that uh, the living reptiles and mammals and birds also possess the same skull which is modified according to their lifestyle. Thank you.